the first yes okay so we can start the first lecture actual uh, you know content uh, interesting lecture <laughs> of this course okay so we start talking about JavaScript maybe many of you know about the language uh, you already used it uh, uh, it's possible I'm sorry for you I know this things uh, for the first lecture so this lecture today are quite basic but we need to start having uh, everybody on on board okay to 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 know all the things about javascript next ones will be more interesting because we won't focus on single you know basic language aspects uh, like uh, you know constructs uh, and stuff like that uh, because uh, they are very similar to other languages like c but, uh, uh, you know, we'll focus more on the interesting part of JavaScript uh, uh, functions, uh, functions that can be passed around, uh, uh, functional programming, asynchronicity, synchronicity, and so on. Okay? But now, you know, we need to learn uh, JavaScript as a language. Um, okay. We will uh, focus mostly on a single version of JavaScript, that is this one called e. e ES6 that is from 2015 seems a bit old and actually it's a bit old you know in computer engineering terms um, you know this is the timeline then I'll, I'll, I'll go back but then uh, you know we focus on this version because it has uh, a very big differences with previous ones later versions ad added the uh, many few things that we are anyway able to use it, them uh, when uh, when programming in react uh, using the react framework and so on because we have tools that can uh, take the new things and translate it uh, in the old javascript version so make them work in the old javascript version but this will be transparent for us so let's say we take this version as a focus uh, of this course but actually we can uh, uh, use uh, later versions uh, of the language uh, as needed. I mean, actually, there are very few, but uh, useful uh, functionalities that we, we can use uh, that are um, interesting for us. Um, so, um, uh, that's the outline. Uh, actually, uh, you know, JavaScript is probably the top one <laughs> computer programming language language now and uh, in, the, in recent years that's because it's used for web applications and you know that every time you visit a website unless it's a static website so there's just a few uh, document some documentation if you interact with the website you need somebody that has programmed the behavior and to program a behavior in the browser, so something dynamic, you need a programming language. And the only programming language that is supported by the browser is JavaScript. Okay, so that's probably why it's the number one uh, language used around. Uh, it can be run in the browser, as I said, but we can run it also in a programming environment. And we have a programming environment that the one that I asked you to install in the previous uh, um, hour. That is this Node.js. Okay, it's the interpreter of JavaScript that can run as a standalone program in in uh, a computer. It has nothing to do with Java. I recommend you that you know Java is a completely different thing. Probably they call it JavaScript because uh, when they invented it, uh, Java was a nice thing, so they wanted something that sounded similar. Okay. The first version was written in 10 days. This gives you the idea about what uh, kind of, let's say, let me say mess was the first version of JavaScript, okay? Because if you developed a programming language in 10 days, uh, probably, okay, you're, you're probably very good in developing things, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it's really difficult to come up with something that is uh, robust and uh, uh, good enough, uh, you know, to last for years. So many fundamental language decisions were made because of uh, non-technical reasons. Okay, I want this because uh, it simplified me uh, a few things, uh, and I don't really think in terms of uh, will this make sense in a few years uh, when the language will be 
expanded in some ways and so on, okay? So the history, we saw the history, this is the inventor, the guy, the 10 day guy. <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, it's pretty old, uh, 95, okay? And it evolves over time. Uh, we need to remember only these things. Uh, so the, the name is ES6, which typically correspond to one year before, okay, in calendar time, 2015, okay? So if you hear about a ES10, it's 2019 and so on. So you, you get more or less an idea about uh, the age of the version of the language, okay? Uh, basically, every year they come up with uh, uh, a, a new version, mm, maybe with just a few small things mm, uh, added, let's say. But um, uh, let's say that uh, the big gap was, uh, was, well, okay, here 10 years ago, but uh, this is really history, but uh, between uh, ES5 and ES6. Okay, ES6 is, uh, let's say, modern JavaScript. It introduces classes, modules, uh, all these kind of things uh, that uh, allows us to program in a reasonable way. Okay, you, you know, let, without let, basically you, you rely on a sort of global variables and stuff like that, which makes everything really complicated and error prone and so on. Okay, so uh, basically every year there's a new release. There's a committee uh, behind this, so it's not just a single company. They started, it started as a, an effort by a single company, but now there's a committee. If you want uh, a wide adoption of something, it cannot be a technology uh, you know, uh, owned by a single company because there's always the risk that the company decides not to support it anymore, not to release it anymore for free, or close it, or change the license, and so on. So you need a, comp a, um, um, a committee behind that, so that uh, all the, uh, how to say, um, all the requirements coming from different stakeholders can be taken into account in the, developing, in the development of the new versions of the language. Okay, so it's not just a company decide it has to be this way and, and you go this way because others cannot say anything, okay? If there's a committee, there's a discussion and there's pressure from many parts uh, and hopefully things uh, go uh, towards a path that is useful to most, if not all, uh, of the stakeholders involved, okay? So, it's a standard, it's an ICMA standard. Uh, you can look it up uh, in, in the web and you can read it, but as any standard, you cannot really understand anything from the standard specification, okay? Because it's formal, uh, it says everything in a formal way, and it, it doesn't give you the uh, hints about the ideas behind every single uh, feature or characteristic that is included in the language. That is instead what we are trying to do here in this class and in any good class that's playing JavaScript. There's different ways of uh, uh, running JavaScript. Of course, we said we have an environment, uh, Node.js. Node.js is just the name of the program, okay? For, it's a program. But then uh, inside it, uh, basically, since uh, running JavaScript is, is something that you need to do uh, in many places, like in the browsers, uh, uh, outside the browsers, and so on. Uh, there are JavaScript uh, engines, so let's say interpreters, libraries that are able to take JavaScript code and execute uh, them, execute it. So there are basically uh, three main ones. The so-called V8, which has been developed by Google and that is included in, in Google Chrome and also being taken by Node.js, so it's a library that interprets JavaScript, so uh, it's available, not really sure if, yeah, I think it's open source. Anyway, and also been adopted by Microsoft, you know, the Edge browser actually uses uh, this uh, Google library, because it, it uh, used another one by Microsoft, but then for some reason they dismissed it. Then there's the Mozilla version, 
okay? And then the Apple one, okay? But uh, uh, we don't really need to know these things uh, except for these names, uh, just because if you mm, go, um, I mean, you go outside the door and uh, somebody says V8 and you've attended the course uh, web application, you don't really know what V8 is. Uh, you know, it seems that the teacher didn't say anything about JavaScript, okay? But uh, I mean, we don't really care about uh, which engine is executing our JavaScript code. A JavaScript is a standard. If we write uh, uh, at a certain level of the standard, like ES6, uh, if the engine is compatible with ES6, it should execute the code in the same way, okay? So we don't really care about uh, these engines except for the name. Okay, and for, for curiosity, like Edge and Chrome inside are actually the same for JavaScript, okay? Even though if they are two different programs. Uh, actually, implementation is not always uh, fully, uh, say, compliant with the standard because there are some characteristics that are not fully implemented. There are uh, a lot of uh, websites that track these things, but typically they are advanced uh, things. Uh, uh, we don't really uh, need these things uh, at this level in the course, okay? But if you really want to use some advanced functionality in JavaScript, uh, you should probably check uh, if uh, your target uh, uh, application, like the browsers and so on, actually support it or not, okay? Uh, there are also ways uh, to go around this uh, problem. So, um, you can, um, uh, uh, let's say, import some libraries uh, that uh, implement uh, uh, new functionalities that are not uh, yet supported by your uh, JavaScript engine. Uh, but of course, this, uh, this is additional complexity and sometimes you don't really want to uh, do this kind of things, at least by yourself, okay? But we can say a few more words about uh, JavaScript compatibility because uh, um, uh, one of the, let's say, main principles that has been uh, followed by this uh, committee developing JavaScript is uh, uh, we don't break the web. So it means that if you write something in a certain version of the JavaScript, so let's say ES6, then ES7 comes out, ES8 and so on, what you wrote in ES6 will run uh, without modification in the later version of the JavaScript, okay? So, uh, you developed a web page or something, a web application in JavaScript, and then the browser, you know, updates its engine and supports uh, ES8, 9, 10, and so on. Your web application still works, okay? Because you don't have to do any modification to JavaScript because they will not introduce anything that will uh, change the behavior of your JavaScript code in next versions of JavaScript, okay? This is really important for, for web applications. Uh, this has not been uh, always uh, this way because at a certain point there has been a discontinuity and something uh, behaved differently. Uh, and that was before the ES6 because there were actually some you know, uh, really dangerous, let's say, behaviors in all JavaScript code that we, we don't want to carry on in, in newer code, but uh, we will talk a little bit uh, about this uh, uh, later, okay? Anyway, let's say from ES6 until now, there's no more uh, problems in, of this kind. Of course, uh, uh, nothing is forward compatible in the sense that, uh, um, uh, if you take something uh, from ES8, version 8, and you run it on, on something that is able to, to execute only version 6, of course, they, you can have errors, uh, problems, and so on, okay? But that's, that's natural. The older version doesn't support the future, okay? But, but we have two ways of supporting new... Um, new uh, functionalities of JavaScript uh, via transpiling or via polyfilling, okay? Transpiling basically is, is taking your JavaScript code, uh, a program takes it, analyzes it, 
see that there are uh, um, uh, characteristics that are from a later version of the language, takes them and tra uh, translate them in, a, in the way you would have written them in the older version of JavaScript. So let's say you have some operator that was not present in the older version of JavaScript, it does something, uh, it ri the translator writes the code to do the same thing in the older version of JavaScript. Okay, without the operator, maybe it's like 10 lines of code, it automatically do this translation. So basically we can write uh, the code with the new version of JavaScript, which is uh, hopefully simpler, okay, like a new operator that simplifies something. And then we let the program, a, a, a translator to do this transpiling, so translate it in the older version of the language and then run it in the execution environment, in the browser, in Node, whatever, okay? Or another approach could be having libraries uh, defining functions, typically there are functions which are not available in a certain uh, uh, version of the language, like some methods, uh, static methods of uh, whatever, object functions, arrays, and so on. Uh, they are not available in the older version, but they are very useful. So before running our code, we load a library that implements those methods. Add these methods to the objects where we will uh, use them, okay? Uh, and this is called uh, not just, you know, adding a library, but there's a term for this, and this is called poly, polyfilling, okay? So when you hear these uh, two terms, okay, you know what we are talking about. So it's being able to use a later version of JavaScript in terms of the language specification, so operators, functions, and so on, on an older version that executes the code, okay? Um, in this course, uh, these activities will be performed automatically, okay? So, Basically, either we have the environment that executes our code, or we have something that does the translation for us, and we don't have to do anything, especially, basically, with React, that is a, the second part of this course, okay? So when we are actually writing code in the React framework to, to code a, a, a web application. Okay, so where do we execute the JavaScript? We already said in the browser, uh, in an environment, and we uh, chose Node.js, which is, by the way, one of the most uh, widespread uh, uh, environments, uh, programs, let's say, that makes available a JavaScript environment. And then there are other, uh, let's say, toys. You can call them toys, okay? We'll have a look at this uh, today. JavaScript Tutor is basically a website which is again a web application that has been coded to understand a simple, mm, uh, quite simple JavaScript code, but makes, uh, um, but this will make a, a visualization of the execution of the code. So it will help us to understand the basic things about the language, especially about uh, arrays uh, and, and, and objects, okay? So these are basically just uh, toys uh, to, to learn. So let's have a look at this Python tutor, okay? So it's just a, a link, okay? So uh, we open, yes, it's open. Uh, it's just a website, okay? Um, actually, it's a website. You need uh, the internet connection to load uh, the website. So to download, uh, let's say, all the code of the web application. But afterwards, it works locally. So you can write a code. It doesn't send your code wherever in the world, okay? But it just runs locally, at, at least I think. Um, let's say we can code something. Uh, let's say create a variable, a second variable, uh, fb equal to two. And then we can visualize the execution. Okay, step by step. Okay, uh, there's some hard and so on, sorry, but, you know. Um, so this creates two variables, one, two, two, 
two values and nothing really special but uh, if you do something more complex at least not too complex but something quite uh, interesting okay let's say let's make a vector we, we'll come back to these things how to create a vector etc i just uh, demonstrate in this tool now uh, we can uh, execute uh, the code and see you know there's an array there's uh, a value in the position number zero so index number zero one two and so on okay so uh, it's pretty useful to visualize the execution of the code and since uh, it's a uh, it's a tool it's not a debugger you can also go back uh, forth and so on okay it's just uh, understands all the your javascript code and creates a, a graphical visualization very useful at, at the beginning and then you learn javascript and you you won't need the, to you 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 won't need it okay it's not the only tool the there's javascript in the browser so actually you can execute code javascript code in the browser in your browser in the one that you have installed or, or the, the computer uh, manufacturer has installed for you, okay? So if you go to, let's say Firefox, we have Firefox here. Uh, there are, um, where is this one? Uh, um, more tools, uh, um, web, web developer tools, yes. I hope it, yes, becomes bigger. There's a tab console. Actually, you see, well, let's uh, delete everything. <laughs> okay. This is a JavaScript interpreter. We can do the same that we did before. Let uh, A equal to one, two, three. Okay. We define this, uh, this uh, variable, console log, so we the console log is like a print for the other environment so it prints something on the console this is the console actually uh, a okay it prints the array and so on okay so this is the javascript interpreter that interprets the javascript coming from the websites that where we uh, navigate to so like the python tutor or whatever uh, github etc but it's also available for us, okay? Uh, and actually, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, console, we can inspect what's happening in the JavaScript code of websites, okay? Because JavaScript code of websites is actually executed in the browser. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to inspect what's happening. Note that I didn't uh, install anything special in this browser. This is available in any browser. Well, actually, maybe in mobile browsers, there's no room for all these things. So, you know, on your smartphone, probably you're not able to do this kind of things. But on the desktop or in a, uh, well, in an environment where you can install, uh, let's say, the standard version of the desktop version of the browser, you can do this kind of things. This analysis, the bugging, and so on. You can do it uh, for many other uh, activities that the browser does like a uh, network connection and so on and later in the course we'll talk about this stuff um, HTML code and so on okay so we saw that actually the the you know JavaScript environment exists and it's exists in the browsers as well standard versions okay uh, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc. Okay, any big browser name uh, has this this uh, capability. Okay, so now we have a, a tool where we can experiment JavaScript, either in this Python tutor or in the browser. Okay, and later on, from next week, uh, no, next week, next uh, lecture, we will also open this Visual Studio Code, so the environment that we will use uh, in the rest of the course. Okay, but for today, this is enough. So, JavaScript. First thing you need to understand is uh, that uh, one JavaScript program is one single file. Okay, this is very different from the other languages uh, where you probably programmed already. 
So like in Python, you do, you, you do many files and then you execute a single program and in C you compile them, etc. Here, a single file, a single program, okay? That's at least the basic way of writing JavaScript. Then, since, you know, of course, to write something more interesting, you need to split things into different files. There will be ways of making these files to talk together, okay? But that's the basic idea, one single file, one program. <coughs> one JS program. Uh, because each file is loaded independently, because you always need to think where we come from. We come from the web, 95, 1995. JavaScript had to solve a problem for the browser. We need to load code in the browser. And the way was download a program and execute a program. And they thought, okay, one file is enough, okay? That's the, the, the way it's been designed, okay? You need to communicate between different programs. <laughs> it's complicated. At the moment, uh, we have only this uh, global state, uh, which you know is always uh, dangerous to use because you never know who, who else is using the global space. Just you know, think about the name conflicts uh, for the variables. You decide to call something. Uh, like uh, calls and the other calls as well, so the, the name conflicts and so on, okay? And then the, there's the problem of, uh, you know, developing things that can be modified by others, etc. All the things that you already know for, you know, programming in other languages. Okay, so remember this, we will start with single files, uh, so for today, tomorrow, let's say, <laughs> this will not be a problem, when we encounter the problem, we will tell how to solve this. Second thing, the file is ent entirely parsed and then executed top to bottom. This is uh, similar to other programming languages. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm not really sure you, if you come from Polytechnic or you already did Python at the first year. That's the same thing as Python. If you have a syntax error before executing the, the program, it tells you uh, there's an identification error, there's a, there's a problem somewhere because I cannot parse the, the, the file. After the file has been parsed, so not executed, just parsed, just checked uh, uh, for uh, uh, correctness of the syntax. Okay? Then it starts execution of, uh, of course, top to bottom, so from the first line uh, and, uh, to the next. Okay, uh, and then relies on a standard library, of course. Every, every language has, needs a standard library. Okay, just, you know, to, to print something on the console, to, to create an array, to, to, to find something in an array and so on. I mean, a, a few of the most used, most used functionalities needs to be implemented, otherwise uh, we, we will be mad, okay? Uh, and then the execution environment can provide additional APIs, like the browser will provide a lot of things uh, and we will learn what the browser provides, okay? Um, so, We've done uh, 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 an introduction to what a JavaScript program is, and then we need to understand just a few things, and then we start uh, maybe doing some examples, okay? JavaScript is written in Unicode, so it's not, uh, you know, single characters, characters, actually, uh, like uh, C code, okay? Unicode, JavaScript is using Unicode. Why? Because it comes from the web, okay? But please don't abuse it, <laughs> okay? So you could, uh, let's say, do this kind of things, uh, assign an emoticon and to a variable. It's a single character, okay, Unicode character, but please, uh, I mean, um, it's somehow okay, you know, for some peculiar characters, like uh, with the accent or some special letters or some alphabet, but uh, please try not to abuse it because uh, there will be problems later on otherwise, because uh, not always uh, Unicode maps to a single character and things like that. So all the functions working on strings will be more complicated, okay? Uh, but this is uh, just to tell you that uh, it's not a problem if you want to use some, let's say, no standard characters. That is uh, Unicode anyway. Uh, semicolons on the lines are not mandatory. If you come from C, you know that C needs a semicolon at the end of the instruction. JavaScript uh, 
doesn't need semicolons uh, um, on uh, every line because uh, there are uh, um, instructions that automatically insert these semicolons or separate the previous instruction from the current one uh, in a certain conditions. Uh, we will come back to this point, okay? <laughs> because it's a matter of debate uh, between, uh, among uh, many JavaScript programmers. But uh, actually, it's just a, I mean, the specification says where the uh, semicolon is mandatory, we just follow this specification and that's fine. The code executes uh, correctly, okay? But it, it's more a, a stylistical thing here. It's case sensitive, like C, like other languages. Comments are similar to C. It's actually very similar to C. So uh, you, you are supposed to know C programming language, so we'll not go into many details about these things, okay? Uh, we have uh, identifiers, uh, we have literals, so constant like strings, numbers, and stuff like that. Some reserved keywords, of course, like any language, uh, you know, for, uh, uh, if, uh, else, uh, these kind of things. And um, uh, so we'll not focus that much on, on this aspect. So we, let's say we, we'll see them uh, as we go on in the, in the course. Just one more slide on the semicolon because I, t I told you, you know, there's this particular behavior, you do not insert it, uh, JavaScript at a certain time, uh, understand where the instruction is finished uh, and that's a new instruction, okay? But we need to be careful that forgetting semicolon can lead to unexpected behavior, okay? So, for instance, uh, you, you, you typically think a single instruction is a single line of your code. Okay, you go new line and you write a new instruction. That, that's a typical way of writing programs, not just JavaScript. You put a new line in JavaScript, there's just blanks. If the rest can be attached to the previous instruction where you didn't put the semicolon, it will be attached. Okay, the typical case is that on the new line you have uh, an open bracket like for functions, calling functions, or opening a bracket for accessing an array, this will be attached to what is written before if you don't put the semicolon, okay? So let's say there are um, style guides and whatever. Um, you want to be on the safe side, always put the semicolon. If you feel comfortable and you know what you are doing, you can miss, uh, I mean, avoid putting the semicolon, okay? So let's start putting semicolon, like C, okay? We'll never be wrong, okay? Because we always say when the instruction finishes, okay? We might use more semicolon than needed, but we will never be wrong, okay? And if you want to be more, let's say, stylish, you can, you can see what others do, like uh, there's plenty of these guidelines, Google has, you know, it's style, uh, Facebook has its style, and so on, okay? <coughs> okay, another very, very important thing that we need to know and we will always use and will require you to always use is to use the strict mode. Actually, it's a simple string written uh, as the first instruction of your program. Actually, not really instruction, it's a string. Double quotes, use, stri use strict double quotes, uh, semicolon. Just a string, so it's compatible with older version of JavaScript, but then it tells the interpreter to execute your code in strict mode, which is very, very useful because JavaScript, as I told you, is, uh, is a bit, it's kind of a mess uh, if you really want to use the older version because it allows very unusual and strange behaviors, very, very difficult to debug and so on. Okay, we'll see a few things uh, later, but uh, just to tell you, uh, you know, uh, if you use strict mode, you cannot define two or more properties or function with the same name, okay? Otherwise, JavaScript says it's nothing. So you define a, a variable with a certain name, you redefine it with the same name because you forget that before you use the, that name, JavaScript says nothing. Overwrites the old one and doesn't say anything it's not compiled, so there's no compiler, there's just execution, the, mm, syntactically it's correct, you 
uh, the interpreter executes it, and you become mad because you don't think there are two things called in the same way that contains two different uh, uh, values. You want they contain different values, but since they are called in the same way, one will override the other. Okay, so this kind of behaviors are disabled by the strict mode, but they are allowed in the old JavaScript code. That's why we need to use the strict mode. Uh, it's suggested to use the strict mode. Okay, uh, if you start a number with zero because you you forgot it, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was uh, like. Uh, Lecture zero 01, okay, zero 01 is simple, but zero 09, it interprets it uh, as an octal, literal, so it's an error <laughs> because it's a base 8 number, okay, for all JavaScript. All these kind of things are disabled and gives you an error when you execute the, the code in uh, strict mode. So we will use strict mode because it simplifies things, okay? Um, and sometimes uh, uh, the, the code can uh, even run faster because, because it doesn't have to check for all these uh, quirks and strange things uh, allowed in the older version of the JavaScript. Okay, so just a few more introductory things on JavaScript and then we'll test something, I think. Values and types. So uh, if you come from a strongly typed uh, language like C, you are used to think that uh, uh, variables have an associated type. Like you define int, uh, float, uh, char, etc. Okay? Uh, actually, this is a, a, a script. So it's more like a Python stuff, if you know Python. So values have a type, but variables can contain any type. Okay, so the same name that you give to a variable can hold uh, uh, different types of values. So at a certain point in the program can hold uh, a number, then a string, then a, a, a reference to an array, then an object, and a function, and so on. Okay, so in, in JavaScript you have variables declared without a type, okay, because the type is a property of the value that is contained in the variable. There are five primitive values. So, let's say the number, easiest. String, not, there's not a single character, there's a string. Boolean, and these two special values, null and undefined. Okay, and we'll talk more about them later. And then there are complex va um, um, values, which are objects. So it means they are basically a reference to something in the memory that represents this object. And there are three types of objects. There are arrays, as the ones we already saw, uh, functions, and user-defined objects. So objects that we define by, by ourselves. Okay? So we specify the properties, etc. Always keep in mind this stuff, okay? So, same variable can contain different types. Um, okay, uh, well, the declaring string is easy. Double quotes, single quotes, and then there will be this back tick. We'll see later what, what this means. Number, no, there's no difference between integer and float numbers. We don't know. We need to check. If in the, during the program we need to check if a value is an integer or not, we need to develop code or find a library function that tells us if it's an integer or not. Okay? <coughs> There's no integer type. It's a number. And Boolean, well, it's very simple. True, false. Okay? Um, okay. Sometimes you need to convert between different types. This happens in all the languages. You read from the keyboard in C or in Python, and you read the characters, and then you need to convert them into numbers and, and so on. Okay? So these kind of things, uh, you, you need to do them all the time. Uh, you need to be a bit careful when converting to Boolean type. And this happens especially when you put an expression 
into a conditional statement, like an if. If something, then, okay? This something will be converted into Boolean to do the evaluation and to decide which path of the program you need to follow. So, we need to know which kind of values convert to false and which kind of values convert to truth, to true, okay? So, the following values are falsy. They're called falsy because they are not actually the value false in JavaScript. But if converted, they will be converted to false. Okay, so they are false C. Zero, minus zero. Just here you start <laughs> to see the JavaScript sometimes is a bit uh, weird, okay? Because there's zero and minus zero. Not a number, okay? This uh, value, numeric value can also contain not a number. And undefined and no null, this those two special values and the empty string the empty string converts to false when you evaluate as a boolean expression the rest is truth is true so uh, they are the truthy value so anything which is not zero or minus zero anything which is a string of non zero length so the string false is true Okay, so that doesn't convert to false. Right? This is this is uh, easy some time way. And but the empty array and the empty object are true. Okay, why the empty string is not? Uh, why? Because the designers of JavaScript decided this way. Okay, in those days, in those ten days. Okay, <laughs> that's the way. You can do comparison. You have uh, the uh, let's say standard comparison that attempts to convert one type into another before doing the comparison. Okay, you cannot compare a number to a string. What's the meaning of comparing number to string? Either there are two strings and so they are equal or either there are two numbers and, and you can decide if they are equal or not. Okay? But if you want to check if the type is the same as well, you need to have a different operator. And this will come back uh, later as well. So the triple uh, equal sign doesn't convert the value. So if you, in, uh, in a variable you have, uh, let's say, the string one, and in the other, one, the other variable you have the value one, so the number, the double equal says true, and the tri triple equal says uh, false, okay? Because it doesn't convert the type. It says type is different, they are different, that's all, okay? Regardless of the value. Number, uh, already, I already said the no difference between integer and reals. You see what comes in, in uh, recent versions of uh, languages? You know, sometimes you want uh, big uh, numbers, big integer numbers, uh, other types, etc., and that's why they periodically revise the new st the, the standard. Okay, but we are not really interested in this uh, this aspect. This is just an example. Okay. Anyway, uh, integers uh, and reals. So they are numbers for the basic JavaScript, the uh, ES6. And then there are special values, the undefined that we will find. Uh, uh, you know, in many, in many places, uh, maybe you've seen that uh, uh, when we were, you know, playing with the console, you know, um, to, where, where's the console? Okay, so let's say, uh, the, no, uh, ABC. Uh, okay, ABC is not the console. No, it doesn't say. It's not. Uh, it's it's too good. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's forget about this. Uh, I wanted to s to to show you something. Well, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it comes out this undefined uh, value, okay, which is a special value, okay. So it's what is, is contained in a variable that has been declared but not initialized. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's why the, the example wasn't working. Uh, well, it was 
so you you can play net abc okay undefined and now you see undefined okay sorry <laughs> uh, but we will come back to with these examples okay so basically undefined is the default value of variables before you put a variable a, a, a value inside the variable okay and define a variable nothing inside that's undefined okay you return nothing from a function that the value the return value of the function is undefined okay null is a special value it is when we actually want to put this value into a variable but saying that uh, uh, there's no value so it's not that we didn't put a value is that we put a value but we wo we want to say that there's no value to put okay so it's a null like the null all uppercase of uh, java for instance or this kind of things or the none of python if you like okay well these are called nullish value but it doesn't matter it's not a number okay variables uh, are pure references in the sense that either they contain a value of the five that i showed you before so this five string number boolean null undefined or they are a reference what we would call a pointer in another language okay in a, like in c okay in other languages it's it's hidden like in java like in python when you have an object when you have a, an array and so on you have a, a pointer that you don't see while you program you cannot manipulate explicitly except in, except replacing and so on but actually it's a pointer it's an arrow that points to some places in the memory where the actual data is stored for the object for the array and so on okay unless it's a primitive type like number string and so on okay so now we need to declare a variable uh, there are three different ways of doing that in javascript actually four but the fourth is forbidden now uh, let const and bar you see the first two are bold okay uh, let's see what's the difference and then we will experiment with the python tutor okay so actually there's let the const they are very easy to understand let behaves uh, as we expect in other languages so you declare a variable from that point on it exists you are free to not to assign a value at the, at the variable like i did before okay let abc that's all uh, but when you declare it, uh, you cannot redeclare it. So you cannot say let ABC again because the name already exists. So it prevents the problem that I was saying before. So uh, uh, you, you use the same name for two different variables. This cannot happen, okay? Because you already declared the variable. Like in C, when you compile it, it says, uh, well, it's already declared declared and uh, when in python you do this kind of thing they say it's, uh, the, the, the variable well actually in python you don't declare them <laughs> i'm sorry um okay the scope we'll discuss about the scope later uh, this is the preferred way of declaring a variable where the content should change over time let's say a, an index of an array okay and then the, the index uh, that you put into a for to 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 iterate over an, uh, over an array and const is the same but the value cannot change okay actually the value so it means the reference not what is pointed by the reference if you do const and then you declare an array you have a const reference to the array so it means you cannot put another reference into the variable that points to the array but you can change the array okay we will see that and then this this var which i don't want to see at the exam okay i don't want to say you lose points for this thing when you, when i see it at the exams but uh, if you use var probably you have not done other things very well <laughs> okay because that's a old way of declaring variables in javascript which has uh, a lot of uh, 
problems. Uh, problems in terms of uh, helping a uh, good development of the programs. There's no problem in executing. I mean, the environment can execute it. If, if you want to use VAR, you can. But uh, the fact is that you can redeclare it. So you say VAR ABC, and then later in the program you say VAR ABC, etc. And, and you you go back to the, the problem that I said before. So you declare two things with the same name. So it's probably an error. But since var allows this, the interpreter JavaScript doesn't say anything. Okay? It's up to you. Be careful. And uh, there's also another quirk, so strange thing happening. So and in the middle of your program, you declare var something, var abc. This exists since the beginning of the program. Okay? This is quite strange. So you can use it before declaring it. So the, your program at a certain point says var abc. In the beginning of the program, you can use the abc equals something, you can assign stuff and so on. Quite strange. Okay? So let's avoid these uh, behaviors because it breaks our, our model of how the program works, okay? Because something that comes later in the program has an effect on something that comes before, okay? Why this happens? Uh, just a curiosity because, you know, that the, I say the JavaScript parses the whole program. So it knows that a certain point there's a variable var. So it creates in the beginning before starting the program, okay? But it really breaks uh, our mind when, when you are trying to debug the program. So try not to use it. And there will always be a way not to use it. We don't really need them th this way, in the bar, okay? Uh, it doesn't need to appear in your project. And there's a fourth method that we cite only for completeness. Uh, even you can say, uh, as I did before, ABC equals something, okay? No declaration. Uh, even worse, okay? Uh, but this, luckily, is forbidden in strict mode. That's why we want to use strict mode, okay? Because at otherwise, at a certain point, we mistype in the name of a variable. We don't use var, let, etc. They start to exist, start to exist from the start of the program. We don't even know <laughs> about it, uh, and, and we become mad trying to, you know, debug this program. Okay, avoid it. And in strict mode, so if we put use strict, that's forbidden. That's luckily gives you an error when executing the JavaScript code. Okay, well, actually before executing because uh, you know the parsing happens before. Okay. Um, so this uh, behavior of uh, having the variable uh, moved to the beginning of the program is called hoisting, just to you know, remember the term, because you can find it around. But we'll try to avoid it, okay? So let's try to play a little bit with this uh, the, the assignments in, in JavaScript, okay? So... Uh, we say that we always start to use strict, always, okay? Then let a equal to one, eh, that's normal, a new variable that will be able to change the value over time. Const b equal to two, so I, I will not be able to say b equal to three later because the, the program says, well, it's a const, you cannot, uh, you cannot reassign. Let's say equal to true, that's not fine. Let e, a equals to five, that's an error, okay? A has already been declared, okay? You cannot uh, declare two variables with the same name. That's really simple. If we create a new scope, uh, which actually in JavaScript, uh, uh, now we are doing this uh, with the curly brackets uh, just because uh, it's simpler, okay? But we don't actually do this kind of things in real JavaScript. Let's say we enter a new scope, you can declare variables again because the scope is different, okay? So actually, in a new scope, the, 
the name A does not exist yet, and so we can declare it, but actually we hide the outer scope. So the A1 is hidden by A5, okay? Uh, let and cost are block scoped. So if you declare uh, them in the, uh, say, in the main program, not inside the curly brackets, basically they, uh, they live in the global space. That is the one that we were s seeing in the Python tutor, global frame, okay? If we open a scope, they will live into the scope and will uh, stop to exist at the end of the scope, okay? Um, so we can, we can try, we can try this program, yes. Let's have a look, just to see how, you know, how you can play with the Python tutor yourself after the lecture, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you still have, uh, uh, you still would like to, to play. <laughs> okay, so I just copied and pasted. Uh, okay, so let's visualize the execution, it's big enough, yes. Use strict, no effect, it's just, a, a, you know, saying the interpreter, okay, strict mod, remember. Let A1, B2, C, B2, T, C, true. For a new scope, let A5, Okay, you see this five is A, but in another block. Okay, so there are two A, one in global and one in the block. Okay, we see console log A, now we are in the block and prints five. Then we are exiting the block, the A inside the block stop, doesn't exist anymore, and we have the A of the global scope one. Okay. So you can play a little bit, uh, it's very, very simple. Let's see something more interesting because you are already familiar with programming, so these kind of things are, uh, I don't want to say an insult, but uh, I mean, really, really simple, okay? This is more interesting because this is the hoisting behavior. We will see it here and we will not use it uh, anywhere in the course, okay? But just to, uh, just to warn you, about the fact that JavaScript can be very strange certain times. So be careful, try to follow all our advices, okay? Because sometimes, uh, if, especially if you are alone, uh, it can be difficult to debug things, okay? Because something unexpected that might always happen. If you are in a lab, of course, ask us and we try to help you as much as possible. So let's see the example. Uh, use strict, okay. So we are in strict mode, okay? We, we are not in non-strict mode, which is even worse, okay? We are in strict mode. We define a function, normal function, nothing particular. I mean, there's a parameter, x, uh, what does this x? If x uh, uh, greater than one, uh, do something with the variables and print the stuff, okay? So let a equal to one, and we print A, okay, it works. We print B, B is not defined, so this will not work. If we try this example in the Python tutor, it will, uh, let's say, be parsed because uh, it's correct JavaScript, but when we execute the, the code at a certain point, it encounters B, it says not defined, and stops. The program, JavaScript progress when there's an error stops, okay? Even in the browser, okay? Uh, if you open the, the console and there's a problem in your JavaScript code, you see uh, typically red uh, errors saying what's the problem, okay? And it stops execution. It doesn't go uh, uh, further uh, down in the program. Uh, C is undefined, okay. Why is C undefined? It's not defined yet, at least not in the, in the, in the code. But this doesn't give you an error, console log C. Prints undefined. Because, because later on we, s we write var C. This var C gets hoisted. So it's like uh, we put this var C at the beginning of the scope. We're inside a function, so we wanted to 
show you a better scope, okay? It's like we, we wrote var c at the beginning of the function. So var c, c exists, so you can print it if you like. What's inside C? It's undefined, because for JavaScript, every time you don't assign a value, that's undefined. Okay, so this is not an error. So this works. And then x, x uh, greater than one, b a plus one, c a times two, cons log a, b, c, b uh, is still not defined, because b, b is defined inside this, uh, this uh, smaller scope, okay? The scope of the, uh, you know, uh, if, okay? So the, the curly brackets. But C works, works before and works after, okay? Um, not sure if we should try this. Let's see, let's see if I have it with me. Um, slides, no. It's uh, materials. Uh, no, that's just the access. It's in X Cloud. Uh, I should have opened it uh, before. So. Example two, maybe? No, it's too simple. Example two. Three to simple. I don't have it. Well, anyway, I, let's try to to do. Let's try to to do what what you can try to do at home. Okay. Then I won't spend that much time next time uh, to do these things. Uh, So let me see, this is, is just a comment. Uh, okay, so let's visualize the execution. Okay. So you see this, you know, when you, when you try to execute everything, uh, you know, we need to remove this console B, otherwise uh, uh, nothing works, okay? So you have seen the error. So let's remove this one, otherwise we won't be able to do anything. Okay, so you strict. We go down because the function is not executed, it's just declared, okay? So first instruction, exec executed instruction is example two, so we call the function with the parameter two, okay? And let uh, e, uh, no, a1, console log, okay, console log c. You see that the c already exists because it's a var here, but it already exists with the value undefined. So it will print undefined. And then it will do its computation, a, okay, and, um, let's see, yes, okay. So that's all. You can try all these examples by yourself in the Python tutor. It's the simplest thing. You don't need to, to have uh, Node.js installed and anything. Okay? So for the first uh, day, you can start playing around. Okay. So now that we, we have seen the basic things about, you know, focusing on the strange aspects of JavaScript, okay? So hoisting uh, var that needs not to be used, uh, and the fact that the variables contain anything and the value as a type, we can, let's say, go faster on the rest, okay? I, want, I would like to finish this set of slides today, but the rest is more standard, okay? As usual, we will stop and focus on strange things, we have as a reference the C programming language because I told you the keywords and the structure is more or less similar. You saw the curly bra uh, braces, uh, et cetera, okay? But also assignments, uh, operators, and so on. So there's plenty of operators uh, in any language. It, JavaScript is quite rich in this regard, okay? Of course, assignment, but also, you know, you can uh, 
do plus equal etc you know so add something to a variable without uh, repeating the variable etc all this kind of operator shift whatever you 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 dream <laughs> let's say okay so there's no need to stop on this when, when you need something uh, you you look it up in the manual or on the internet and see what you need and uh, how it's written and and use it so we'll focus on important things like the strict equal the three equal signs that we already saw makes a comparison first comparing the type the type is different the the, the expression evaluates to false the type is the same let's see what is the value okay um, okay uh, I would uh, suggest uh, to avoid comparing different values if possible, okay? Because, uh, because let's say, uh, you always risk to forget how conversion works in JavaScript, uh, or maybe somebody else reads the program and doesn't uh, come to his or her mind that, uh, you know, there's uh, a conversion, an implicit conversion and so on. And certain times you need to know which is the priority of the conversion. Is the number converted to string? Is the string converted to number? Okay, and, and these kind of things. So let's try to avoid this, these comparisons. Okay, uh, triple equal, or sometimes double equal if you really know they should be equal or not. <laughs> okay, but uh, you know, for greater, less, etc is more dangerous there are rules for this conversion if you look it up in the standard well you can read the standard they are not so well explained but uh, you know um, there's a way to convert something into something else in terms of types and that's not always uh, easy to understand just to give you an idea again to enter in the javascript mood okay how can I convert a string into a number? A string contained in the variable s, typical variable for string, plus s. If I write plus s, plus is a numerical operator. Okay? So it converts a string into a, value, into a number. So I write one plus a string. If the string contains a number, the result is a number. Okay? But this is a bit weird, right? So you can do this kind of things. S minus zero. If we don't want to add anything. <laughs> okay. So this is the second one, the third one. It's not really the way you should code because, because it's basically unreadable, right? Okay, if you are doing a challenge, uh, the most... Uh, um, you know, complex code you can write in JavaScript, that's fine, but otherwise it's really weird. Um, sometimes you see this kind of expressions. Uh, this is, I don't want to say better because I don't really like that much, but uh, sometimes it might be needed. So double negation, double not, okay? Not, not, so in the end for sure you have a Boolean and you have uh, the same value from which you started because you use not two times, okay? But really it's not that much readable, right? <laughs> okay, and inside A there can be anything. Number, string, null, undefined, etc. And you need to remember how these things convert to a Boolean. You remember the truthy values, the falsy values and all this stuff. And th those are the rules. So there are ways to program in JavaScript that are really difficult to understand. Uh, and for sure they are unreadable, <laughs> okay? So my advice is try not to use that, them too much. You can play sometimes to, um, just to see how they work, but then try to avoid them, okay? 
Uh, okay, logical operators, no problem, and or uh, not. This is the not, you know, the exclamation mark, as in C. Operators, uh, addition, decrement, etc., uh, etc. Et we'll focus on uh, a couple of uh, useful idioms, so ways of writing expressions, because they, they come, uh, they, they are useful sometimes, okay? So the logical or, and we'll see later also the end. Logical or, so double uh, um, vertical uh, uh, line, so the pipe on the, on the keyboard, double. Uh, it's a logical or, so you can use it in a conditional expression, right? So uh, this condition or the other condition. But you can use it also in expression that evaluates something different, like uh, uh, strings, for instance. So you want to assign a value to a variable with a default value. So if A is not set, you assign B, otherwise you assign the value of A. And you write A or B, okay? Um, I think that there will be uh, examples later, okay? We'll, we'll see, and this is uh, quite typical of JavaScript code, so this is less unreadable because it's more, uh, uh, how to say, intuitive. E, uh, no, A, uh, default value B, okay? Since things, uh, variables can be not set, like undefined, with undefined, this stuff works. And it always gives you a value which is valid, either the original value or your default value. And you never come out with undefined from this expression, unless the original value, no, sorry, the, the, the default value you put is undefined, but if you put undefined, Probably you don't need this expression. Okay, plenty of uh, stuff, uh, standard stuff. You want to do operations, mathematical operation, etc. Just uh, look it up in the internet, and you'll find how how to how to code this stuff. Okay, but we don't stop on these things because uh, you don't. We don't really need to to stop on these things. You you, you are able to progress, so you know that. Uh, Functions like this should exist, and you just need to search them. Control structure. So you need to program. You need to have uh, conditional expressions, a different execution path. So you need to know how to write an if, if uh, with different options, if, else, etc. Switch, like in C, the only difference is uh, the difference is expressions here might be strings, okay? In C, strings don't work here. Well, it, they work, but not as expected. Uh, condition is always uh, evaluated if it's truthy or not, okay? So there's this implicit conversion to Boolean with the rules that we saw in previous slides, okay? So always remember this. For statement, so the loop, you can write it as in C, for let i equals to zero, i uh, less than n, i plus plus, standard for, no problem. Um, do while, while, you can use break and continue like in C, they behave like in C. Uh, there are two different ways two additional ways of, do, of uh, specifying for. One is more useful, that's the one on the right, because it behaves like the, uh, let's say, usual for. For variable of something which is iterable, a vector or a string or something that you can iterate, okay? So let's see the example. Let A of a vector, four and seven, First loop, a equal to four. Second loop, a equal to seven. Okay, very simple. You don't need to declare an index. Okay, it will loop until there are elements. That's a default behavior. It works on strings as well, on the single characters. Be careful that there exists for in. We will not use for in except in really, really special circumstances, okay? 
because it iterates not on what you expect, but on properties of object. So if you have an object, that's one thing. But typically, you don't want to do a loop on the properties of an object because they are not sorted. They are properties. They have different meanings. You loop over uh, strings, over arrays, but not all objects. And if you use this for in on objects which are different, like an array, you loop over properties of array, which is another thing than the values of the array. Okay? So just to try, you can try this, but uh, I mean, remember that if you want to write the for, you write for off. Always for off. If you don't want to use this uh, index variable, which is always possible, of course. There are other iteration methods that we will see later in the course. Maybe already tomorrow. Okay? But uh, uh, mm, they come from a different paradigm of programming, so we'll, we'll see them later. Exceptions. JavaScript supports exceptions. Okay? With other lang like other languages, uh, uh, try, catch, finally. Try, specify a, a part of a program that can throw an exception. You, you capture the exception with a catch, and in the finally, you write code that is uh, executed anyway, regardless that the exception has been thrown or not. Okay? There's a the keyword throw to throw an exception. There are uh, um, objects already ready for the for, for being thrown, okay? Uh, some of them are thrown by the programming environment, like when there's an error, syntax error, reference error that we saw, uh, and, and so on, okay? Uh, typically, we don't catch these errors because uh, a quite fundamental error, if there's a syntax error, there's nothing to catch, I need to fix the program, okay? Uh, but there will be other exceptions that will be thrown and we need to capture, okay? Especially when we talk later about promises, etc. okay? So, standard stuff like C. Arrays, they are more, um, let's say, rich than C because uh, basically they are a list of uh, things, let's say. Things, in a sense, they can be primi primitive values or uh, reference to objects. can be anything. More or less like Python, if, if you know. Okay? You can put everything in each, uh, uh, let's say, box of the array. The simplest thing, uh, syntax you, you already saw, it's uh, the uh, squared bracket. The array has a property dot length. So it's not like C, we need to go to the end and remember if we, uh, well, if we already define the, the size or we put a zero at the end, and et cetera. No, that's an object, it has a property, length. Okay, like Java, for instance. Uh, I think Python as well, I don't remember. No, no Python has uh, the function, anyway. Um, so how do we deal with arrays? Create an array, very simple, open and close squared bracket. You put something inside, you have created the array. Okay? And you can put anything. Numbers, strings, uh, booleans, uh, reference to other uh, arrays, uh, objects, and so on. Okay? There are static methods of the standard JavaScript library that helps you to create the arrays, if you really like. <laughs> Okay, like here, there's a function called off that takes a, a, a variable number of parameters. You call this function static, let's say static function, in the sense that you don't really need an object. Well, actually, the object is present. It's array, which is already defined when you start the JavaScript interpreter. But this is a long story for the objects. So we'll do it later in JavaScript. Anyway, we, we write array, uppercase, because uh, it's case sensitive, it's already defined, okay? That, that's the object uh, made available in the environment. Dot off, and we can call it with the number of parameters. The function takes the first parameter, put it in the first place in the array, and so on. 
so the effect is the same, okay? Sometimes, for some reason, we need, we need to call the function because we have uh, parameters, etc. It's useful. Otherwise, we have the syntax, simple syntax, squared bracket. Uh, it's very easy also to remember, okay? If you execute them in Python, in, in Python Tutor, so <coughs> that web interface that we had before, that's the result. You see, you have uh, this uh, small number, that's the index. Array starts uh, from index zero, and then goes up to the end, okay? So start from zero, like in C. It's an error to access elements outside the range. So an exception will be thrown, okay? It's not like C, anything happens unless the operating system stops the program, okay? Here, like in Java, like in other languages, say in Python, you cannot access uh, arrays outside the range. It's an error. So the program will be stopped. Adding elements. Um, so these arrays are dynamic. We can resize them. We can cut them. We can add mm, elements. We can split them and so on. There are a number of methods of the standard library that helps you to modify this uh, arrays. So like push, push, add an element at the end. It's kind of a list. You add uh, one more element to the list, okay? You can always know the size with length. Unshift adds at the beginning of the array. It's a list, basically. We, you don't have to make room for. Uh, the JavaScript uh, interpreter does it for you, okay? Uh, arrays are managed by the JavaScript interpreter, okay? You don't really see actual memory spaces like in C, okay? So there are different uh, methods that works in place, means modify the array. It doesn't, they don't create a copy of the array. They really modify the array. So they cut uh, a, an element at the end, pop, or add it, push, or do the same at the beginning. Okay, shift and shift. How do I copy an array? And here we start to understand uh, you know, the fact that uh, we have references to the arrays, not actual values. So arrays are not values, are references, the one that we store in the, in the, in the variables. So let's have a look at this uh, code. V, that's an empty array. V0, a, so here we, we learn another thing. We can create, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, elements in the array out of thin air, how do we say? So basically we say that position zero holds a value, but that position starts to exist, okay? They don't even have to be consecutive. I can say V30 equal to something. That position exists, okay? That's another thing which is quite different from other languages. Uh, so V0A, so now the vector has size one and there's just one item, uh, A, in position zero. Uh, then uh, position one, eight. Alias, let's define another variable, let alias equal to V. So V is a copy of the vector, is a copy of the reference. But of course, I'm asking you, so <laughs> of course it's a copy <laughs> of the reference. But so when you write alias one equal to five, do you modify the V or not? Let's try with the Python tutor. Let's suppose you are studying, you don't know, you have no idea, oops. You have no idea, let's try what happens. So you understand the usefulness of this tool. Uh, I don't edit. So, V, empty array, 
So it's a reference, of course, the, 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 the graphics show it's a reference. V0, A, V1, 8, let alias V, what happens? You see, two arrows point to the same vector. So there's just one vector in the memory. If we want a copy of the vector, I need to find a different way. So alias 1 will be 5. So the original array is modified. If I do console log v1, it comes out 5. Okay? Console log alias 1, of course, 5, just assigned. Console log v1, 5. Just one array. Okay? So, remember this thing. This is it's pretty intuitive because it's not that different from other languages like Python and so on. So, how do you copy an array? Well, uh, you need to use a function. It's the simplest thing. Okay? So, array from is not off. Off takes a single value. So from takes the array and makes a copy, a new array. So, you end up with a situation like this. I don't do it in the Python tutor now because we don't have so much time, but you can try yourself. Beware, it creates a shallow copy. Shallow means not deep. So it just copies the references if, if you have references inside the values of the array. It doesn't duplicate all the objects linked by the array. So in a more complex uh, uh, situation, which is not depicted here, but next, tomorrow we will do that, we will see only the references are copied. Okay? So let's say a, 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 an item of the array points to another array, only the reference is copied, so the second array is still one. Only one. Okay, this is a recap. There are other uh, methods uh, that works on the arrays, but we will see them later when, when, uh, when they are needed. Okay? Here on the slide you find uh, useful methods uh, working on arrays, but you know, the definitive guide is always, uh, you know, the uh, Mozilla Developer Network. So you put it array here. You are, you are grown up. So you can always, you know, look for the methods that you need. Okay. Some of the most used ones, uh, you'll find them on the slides. Okay. Like sort and this kind of things. Okay. Join and so on. Okay. Just a few, yeah, a few more things. On the array, this is a very useful idiom, so a way of writing things in JavaScript. You can do assignment that assign more than one value at a time. How? In this way. Let an array that is just defined here. Doesn't need to exist before this instruction. So let brackets x, y equal to 1, 2. 1 goes into x, 2 goes into y, okay? That's quite convenient, like a, a return value of a function. So a function can only return one value, but can be complex object, like an array, and so on. So if you return an array, and you can assign things without assigning single, single values, okay? We need to rush a little bit, but uh, we'll finish tomorrow. Try to be a bit faster. There's also this spread operator, three dots, single dots, okay? Which is very useful because uh, basically it says all the rest is assigned to this variable. Or take this variable and spread it in single items. Basically this uh, operator works with the arrays, both on the left side. So x is single and takes the first value. Y is the rest, it takes all the other values. So Y will be two, three, four, will be an array with all the rest of the values. And vice versa. You want to pre take an array and spread it uh, as single elements in another array or in some places. Three dots and the variable that contains the reference to the array. Okay? You need to get used to this way of writing code, but you'll see that uh, it's not that difficult and it's quite uh, useful. So, 
basically to copy an array we can create a new array and spread the old one spreading means copying okay copying the values it's exactly as array from okay just a, a few words about strings no, they're not that difficult you need to think them in terms of arrays but which are immutable so you cannot change them it's not like in C I take the second character put it in brackets and modify it every method on strings return a new string you need to create new strings if you want to modify something strings are immutable okay they are like array but read only in the content okay um, uh, empty string exists we already saw them okay they evaluate uh, to um, what are uh, false okay falsy you can access single characters you can concatenate with plus okay we have you have the length which is a property not a function okay and there's plenty of uh, methods uh, you know to work on strings uh, similarly to arrays but you know like charret and so on this kind of stuff uh, it's more specific to strings beware be careful because uh, strings are unicode sequences of characters that means that uh, you cannot uh, simply uh, you know uh, um, use uh, your way of uh, you know handling strings and expect that everything works in all cases so if you access a character you're not coming out with uh, uh, you know a single position sometime because uh, Unicode uh, is quite peculiar uh, and sometimes use two characters to represent symbols okay so just be careful let's say if you have normal strings okay you can write the code as, as you're used to but be careful that if you're not writing code using the correct functions and expecting that not always you have a single character etc and sometimes things might not work okay so just uh, let's say it, it, it's a warning if you put if you start putting uh, emoticons uh, uh, foreign characters uh, stuff like that into strings be very very careful of what you're doing with strings okay uh, yeah last thing template literals so we saw uh, double quotes single quotes for declaring strings there was a third method back tick it's a character on the on the keyboard actually it's not on the italian keyboard it's on the english one but you'll find a way to to to, to create it also with the italian keyboard it's like an accent but uh, on the, on the with the other inclination what's the difference between uh, single double quotes and this way of of writing strings well this way allows you to write inside the string javascript expressions and evaluate them with this uh, syntax dollar sign curly bracket open and closed what's inside is evaluated and substituted as a value for the string okay so let's say hello name name is a variable either i write hello dollar sign etc name and this will be substituted with the value of name so the the evaluation of the expression name at runtime and so it comes out hello bill or you need to find another way like concatenating strings we said before plus so you write hello double quote or single quotes plus name okay or name to string that's a, an implicit conversion okay uh, that happens uh, if you write plus name okay uh, well I, no actually it's not an implicit the name already contains a string so it's a concatenation of two strings it's just an evaluation of the value name but if you put a value that contains a number this number is, con is converted into a string and simply attached and the same happens with the dollar sign okay it's a just a more convenient way of writing strings by the way it also allows you to write strings on different lanes 
uh, lines of your code, okay? So I would say just play with these things a little bit. You have uh, your freely available interpreter, which is the Python tutor for now. Tomorrow we will use <laughs> the rest, the, the, the Visual Studio Code. And uh, we'll see tomorrow. There are already the slides available on the GitHub website if you're curious. We'll go on, we'll talk about, talk about functions, objects, etc. And uh, we'll meet, uh, uh, what's the schedule for tomorrow? 11.30, room 10i, okay? Three hours with a break. Okay, no questions. I'm available for questions if you like. But at this time, typically, there are none. Thank you, see you tomorrow.